new roots, but spikes. Oh, oh, oh. However, for my Coilo Stylus Ciliaris, there is no other option. I have to remove her out of this pot. The pot is brittle and broken. Now, I have been talking about how quickly these pots would slip out of my hands as they break. These pots are superb quality, but back in the day, I did treat them with bleach to get them nice, shiny, and white again. Not so much for sterilization purposes, more for the fact that I want things to look purdy. And it has caused something, of course, to happen with the protective outer cover of the pot. And for that reason, I have certain pots that are breaking, which is annoying, but at least this is a pot size that I can replace. The 15 centimeter pots that are breaking like this, I cannot replace. I don't have an insert. I can't find the size here anymore. I have to find another alternative for all the masks that I have in storage if I need to be using them again. But wow, this repot is concerning me because I have not seen the blooms of this beautiful orchid for two years. Yeah, this will be the second year she, if she doesn't make it through this repot, that yeah, whatever, but <laughs> got to think of the orchid before the desire for blooms even becomes a subject. And I wish I could have done this sooner, but I was umming and eyeing, should I, shouldn't I? And then I broke a nail in the process of trying to squeeze the pot out without losing grip of it. And I thought, oh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Breaking a nail, that was the trigger to say, got to go in, got to go in. Now, she has been soaked with calcium and magnesium. I always try to protect the roots and try to get Lekka out of the root tips by pouring away from the actual root tips that I can see. Whatever is going on in the pot will be determined once we get her out. I have space in the back, that is great. And unfortunately, I can see that I have some cleaning. Whoa, sorry. Unfortunately, I can see I have some cleaning up to do. And I say, unfortunately, not because I'm concerned about the health of the orchid. She's doing fine. But because I was hoping to get another orchid done because the pot is broken as well. And she is growing new roots as well. And I really want to get both orchids dealt with in this one video. But I'm not going to rush it. The enemy number one of orchid repots. Being in a hurry. We're going to pretend we have a lot of time. <laughs> and just enjoy the process. Because I love repotting. I love cleaning up my orchids. Especially when I can see this sight of gorgeousness right here. Oh, <laughs> that makes me happy. Uh, okay. Now, there is a very nice root in the back because I thought I could just take my hammer and go for it back there. I like to go for the areas that are loose in the pot and not try to bash all around. Sometimes it's inevitable because the whole pot is rock hard. Champagne problems when it comes to orchid growing. So let me just say that I always find a gentle squeeze is an oxymoron. <laughs> I mean, you got to get the orchid out of the pot, C or C, but there's no such thing as a gentle squeeze. The minute you squeeze the pot, you're already doing damage to the velamen in the pot. But to get the orchid out another way would be to cut the pot entirely down its full length. And well, either way, damage is damage. We try to be as limiting to the damage as possible. So let's see if she's going to come out of her own accord or if I have to get the hammer out. And also see if I can maintain this gorgeous root tip throughout the repot. She, oh, I did soak this orchid, CalMag, magnesium, and seaweed. So there should really not be anything attached too harshly to the edge of the pot. Right, root tips, spikes, huh. sticky roots, nice. 
see I already did damage to that root right there, just by squeezing the pot. Let's just see if we can dislodge it. I'll show you when I get the orchid out what I meant by a gentle squeeze is an oxymoron. And the layman will get damaged COC. Just a gentle tug. <laughs> I'm not touching any of the growths that are in spike. Just a gentle, gentle tug in the opposite direction. Yeah, one root's already gone. And that is why I always say I don't like it when roots are already a certain length. I prefer to go and do something before they reach a length. Nubbin stage is my preferred, preferred length, just when they're peeking out. And we do have work to do. We can get rid of the support. But you see here, this is what I called an oxymoron of a gentle squeeze. You're doing damage once they re reach that certain length. And that is a pet peeve of mine. Anyway, let's sit down. Let's get her cleaned up. Stop the jibber jabber and get her into a pot and pretend none of this has happened. And hopefully we'll get some blooms out of her. So the roots feel firm, that's nice, even though they're brown. Let's check them out. They're fine, but we can still do a cleanup because we've got new roots coming. And this orchid used to be, when she first arrived in my collection in 2018, I potted her up in lava rock. And then when I bumped her up, I wanted everything that I can grow in Lekka in Lekka just to keep things, you know, less heavy. And because lava rock damages the root so, so much more when it comes to repotting than Lekka does. So anything that I see that is cracked, broken, bruised, black comes off. I'm going to be working my way into the support because we won't be needing that. Just always keeping an eye on the upper part here where the new growths are. So when you see these bits of lava rock coming out, those were attached to older roots that have since died off. And well, I'm not putting lava rock in here anymore. I have another Coilostylus and or sturdy eye that has still got lava rock in the center. Because if I can avoid something that is damaging the roots unnecessarily, Seeing as it is inorganic media, it doesn't really matter here or there if I leave it in the pot. So I chose to leave it in the pot. Whatever falls off now naturally is a bonus. You see here, still got that there. And this root is still firm, still attached. So it's not as much death as I thought. But now, of course, I want that support out. At least that's where I'm headed. Whether I'm going to get that far or I'm going to stop because the roots are more important, we shall see. Let's at least give it a go and see what comes off. Got some nice root tips down here. I have some death over here. Hmm. Look at all these roots growing through here. Do I really, really want to put this orchid through? just because I want to do something, because the support isn't bothering me. It was only there because I thought I needed to help some of the growths grow in the direction that I want. But the light training is doing its job. So this orchid is easy to light train. It responds really well to how you place the orchid on the shelf with the angle of the sun, keeping the growth nice and upright. So it's not one that would need a support that's the only reason I'm tempted to remove it. Got some collateral damage happening here. Damaged a root tip all the way back in there. Probably difficult to see. That's a shame. Okay. Note to self, even if I see new roots growing at the surface of this orchid, at the surface of the pot, the old root system has the option to branch deep inside the pot. 
So that is something to take note of, that it's nothing one has to wait for what is happening above the pot. I could have gone in a month ago, even while the spikes were just itty, itty bitty. Hmm. Okay. The reason I'm pointing that out to myself as I speak as well is because the last time I up-potted this orchid from lava to leka, I did not wait for any roots because I was going from inorganic to inorganic. So I'm literally seeing and assessing the behavior of the root system here for the first time. And well, well, well. That's three holes in the ground. I am just going to be a little bit pedantic about the moss at the base. But I'm going to leave the rest of the root system pretty much intact. Okay, end result. That's all I'm gonna do. You can still see lava rock tucked up in the center there, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. We're gonna pot her up, and we're gonna go on to Zagarik Wax African Beauty if you're so inclined to join me for that. Support and all. This pot is now a 20 centimeter pot size. It is one size up from where she was before. I'm not going to be able to scooch her all the way to the back, even though I'm tempted to do so in her case, because clearly in all the years that she's been with me, she hasn't started a new growth elsewhere. She's got two leads coming out the front, but the Leka is stopping me from doing that, and I'm not going to peel out any more, so she'll be far enough back for another two years in this pot. I'm gonna fill up the pot with some water and fill up with Leka. Support and all. Get some fresh RO water in there, and this time I'm also going to respect my loop. Just a little bit of large leka at the base. My main thing is I want leka to fill around everywhere, and I was going to lift the orchid up, put her into the final height that I want her at. At the end of the day, would that guarantee leka would fall into the base? No. That's too high. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Are we okay to go? Third time lucky? The orchid as such is not a climber, but I don't want the roots to desiccate because they're too high in the ambient air. I have a very dry top later, I have very low humidity in my environment, and that is why she always had sphagnum moss around the base to help with the humidity so roots won't desiccate. And now you ask yourself, well, why did you take off all that moss? Well, there's a lot of it too much even this time of year I didn't like that one bit it's gonna grow back but yeah I think I'm okay with this height now and I'm going to fill the large leka around the back because there's a lot of space in there where it can float into the middle and settle down in there because I don't want to use too much of the small leka which I'm going to fill up around the rest of the pot just because I'm filling in blanks. I'm concerned for filling in empty gaps and spaces that can, you know, be occupied by roots eventually. Careful. Did I crack that? Did I crack that? No. Careful, Nina. This is what, this is what happens with me. I usually just do one orchid at a time, and in my mind I'm going, do two. Get the Sagarik wax out of the way as well. And instead of focusing on what I'm doing, I'm already thinking of the next one. It's not a good idea. Not a good idea at all. Highly unrecommended. Don't do that. While I'm shaking, I'm moving her back a bit. And raising her up just a tad. I don't want her that far forward. If she chooses to grow me another lead, great. We still have that space, but two years it would be nice for her to stay in the pot. There we go. Now we can go with the small lecker and fill in the blanks around the edge here. 
at the base. Make sure that we keep that one root tip in our line of vision. Okay, Zagarik Wax African Beauty. She was soaked with CalMag, but that was like three days ago. Oh, I don't want to keep soaking and soaking, so we'll just give her a little bit of a mist. and see if she'll release my tag. Yep, that's okay. That's loose. And I want to show you, look at the beautiful happy sap on this orchid. Oh, gosh. I've had ants all over this orchid. Also, broken pot. And she was only potted up last year, so she shouldn't be a problem at all. She's got roots coming out of the bottom, but they are compromised. I knew I was going to repot her, so I wasn't fussing about where, how I set this orchid down. And so I cracked the roots. But we'll need to snip them off because, yeah, resistance is futile. Let's see how her root system has developed after the division and all the stress she's been through. I would like to maintain a support for her. She's responding well to light training, so that's not the problem. But sometimes the spike can turn out to be rather heavy. And I would like to make sure that if I can't get her to present beautifully, that I can support the spike to see the blooms better, which are not going to happen this year. I am not letting this orchid bloom out if she decides to out of this puny little growth to bloom. This is a winter growth and of course it really didn't amount to anything because of the conditions and circumstances that I had to deal with. She didn't get fertilized throughout the winter because I couldn't provide the light. All she got was regular flushes. Okay, this is a little bit easier. As ex You see, this is ooh, so glad I'm doing this now. we can see how she has responded to last year's potting up or maybe it was two years ago I'll put that up on the screen a lot more cleanup to be done here but that's okay it's a bifoliate it's to be expected there goes a lecker bead that I need to pick up straight away before a curious little puppy comes along and decides hmm what is that Let's go with round two. This one, I will, I'm kind of glad I started with the ciliaris first because now, now I can just take my sweet time. If I had started with the Sagarik wax before the ciliaris, I would have thought, oh no, I'm not doing the ciliaris after this, but here we are. Let's just stay the course. This is gonna be a super duper cleanup, proper cleanup. Am I concerned that she's dumped roots? Absolutely not. It's almost like, what else would you be doing, lady? It was far too cold in the winter for her, far too little light, and I had to maintain the integrity of the self-watering system. So my flushings were sporadic, not as much as I would have preferred, but given the circumstances, you know, and then we know that bifoliates, well, mess with their roots and they're gonna show you who's the boss. And on top of that, keep it cold and wet and they're gonna show you who's the boss. So I'm really pleased to see all these good roots in here. And what is dead is you can see where it was cut. Those are the roots that were alive and kicking when she got the repot, whenever that was. Now, I don't remember off the top of my head and I should have remembered, but my mind is racing for some reason. I don't know why I'm not all chilled today. 
Probably the eagerness to get into these pots has got me sort of feeling a little bit anxious because it's just delay, delay, delay. I've had so much wind. And because this is like a repot after I potted her up, cleaned her up and divided her, I thought I really wanted this to be on camera and film so that it's like an update for everybody that, you know, saw the other video and is interested about the progress of my sagarig wax. Well, we've lost the root system from two years ago. That's not too bad. Especially considering that her circumstances were totally the contrary of what she likes. We got any live branching down there. No, this one's completely gone. Okay. So we're not making mistake after mistake. You know, it's like golf. Once you make a mistake with a bad shot, slow down. You don't want to perpetuate the problem and continue on making mistakes. But we're taking this branch off because it's cracked. And we're just being silly by what we can see. <laughs> this one is a goner as well, so we'll take that off. Careful now, is that one gone? Yep, that one's gone. I'm just going to inch my way through the root bowl, seeing what I can see at the top. And yes, sometimes the top can be desiccated and old, and then you cut the whole thing off at the base, instead of working your way from the bottom up, and then you realize you've made a huge mistake because somewhere down the line it's branching and alive. Well, to some degree, the root characteristic of this orchid, it doesn't do that at least not after two years of a root system. So this one just replaces its roots ever so often. We can take advantage of that by getting a little bit ahead of the game and take something out that is already in actual fact on its way out, but not that obvious to the visible eye. Seeing as I really don't want to bug this orchid ever, well, not ever again, but not for the next two or three years. I want her to get back to her glorious, beautiful, tall growths that stand up majestically and hold gorgeous burgundy spikes of beautifully fragrant blooms. Seeing as I would like to see that again next year. The plan is to do this at like a one and done <laughs> and then leave her be so that her next growth can be pushed to size during the right time of year, which is hopefully still within this growing season. And then we can enjoy the blooms one more time, 2023. So you may say, why are you fiddling with something that at the end of the day is going to go into inorganic meter and it really doesn't matter whether you're cutting off little bits and pieces like this. You are absolutely right. When I started cleaning up this area, I smelt that pungent smell of decay. It just wafted up and I'm like, wait a minute, hold on to your horses there, Sally, you know? Up until then, I had not had that smell. So I'm very, very careful now that I will go and be super diligent about this area because something with that rotting smell, it's no need. While I'm at it, we're gonna do it right. It was all in here and we can say, yeah, I'm probably algae dying off, but it was stronger than that. It may just have been one root, but it's right in here. I just took a little whiff of the section and it still has that smell. So I'm going to go in from the back and find whatever it could be that is in there doing that and see if I can get it out. Yeah. Every time I turn her up and uh, expose this area that's got the algae on it, mm -mm. 
So I'm trying to make sure that I'm smelling what I'm smelling is still on the orchid and has not landed in my catch tray. Because if that's the case, then, you know, we're good to go. So in my mind, I'm trying to perceive where is it coming from? Is it still on the orchid? Something like this had a really bad pong on it. And this one as well, it has it. That had a little bit of a stinky, stinky. A smell I very, very rarely smell. And that's why it's so obvious to my nose. It's not something that comes regularly. When I repotted an orchid the other day, I forget which one it was. Oh yeah, the Pacavia. I repotted her, well, not the other day, that was already a couple of weeks ago, but anyway, I repotted her, and she's doing great, you know, no side effects that I can see, but wow, day two flushing, when I lifted her out of the mask to flush, woo, there was a stench coming out of the pot, and I was majorly concerned that something is compromised and had gone horribly wrong. So I just did what I normally do in situations like that, keep flushing because it takes out whatever is in there and if you can flush abundantly which finally I can do that this year that means you're flushing out all the impurities as well and after day four there was no smell in the pot anymore so it may just have been a little bit of debris that I left behind that had made some you know had decayed further while still in the pot and it's all normal, but now the pot is absolutely odor-free. <laughs> we like it like that. So this one, ooh, when you squeeze it. Hope you can see that. Okay, there's liquid oozing out of that. I thought that root was intact. We're going to get rid of it. We're going to go all the way in intact or not. If you're starting to ooze like that on me, just because I'm squeezing you, you're coming off. It frees up that velamen that I can get rid of. Now this one's a really long route, that's why I left it on, but hey, you come in with an aroma like that, you're coming off. I'll be working with my backup system here. So you were fandangled all the way through to the bottom. Careful, did I crack? Yep. Now I'm gonna leave, no, nope. I'm not gonna leave it. Come off, that's a pity. After my Gold Coast repot, I'm terribly, terribly spoiled. If you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna link it in the description <laughs> because there's nothing like it. I haven't had a repot like that in a long time. It was fantastic. Don't get me wrong. I like my fiddle repots and I like the cleanup and I love what I'm doing right now. But whoop, that was a luxury repot. That was, it was a lot of fun. I was all giddy. <laughs> but you know, we're dealing with a true bifoliate here. So, of course, if a diva needs a pedicure, she is going to get the deluxe version of a pedicure, as in, <laughs> it's all coming out, all of it. Now, if I hadn't smelt that smell, I'd be done. I'm happy with what I'm seeing. So I'm just going, I'm just going around double checking any eventualities here. And we still have some branching happening in the root ball itself from last year. So we're gonna take advantage of that, you see there. Now I could be fussy and try to remove that. Clearly that is not alive anymore, but look at this. It's not happening. We're going to respect that root tip. So there's still a bit of a whiff at the top of the orchid right here, but the roots aren't dead. The ones that are left, they're okay. So it's decayed algae. And with that being said, let's go get her a pot that is in condiciones. I would rather not have her that far back. But here's one thing, just a little tip. Now that I'm very rarely going to pop my orchids up based on where the division is, as in to the back of the pot. You see, if I had potted this orchid up in the middle of the pot previously, I would not have to worry about such long roots stopping me from putting her into the middle of the pot this time. So if you're going to be repotting your orchids every second, every third year anyway, putting the orchid at the back of the pot is really 
obsolete. You can potter up in the middle. It gives you so much more flexibility in the future to either just up pot, the orchid stays in the middle, or as in my case now, I can't put her into the middle because the roots had all the distance to go and before they bent down and well, it's stopping me. My flexibility is lost at this point, which is, you know, no need to pot your orchids into the middle. And here's a classic example why. So I've stopped doing that. This orchid, big chunky roots, it's a thirsty orchid. It's the same size pot as previously. But what I'm going to do in this case is very, very slowly fill in large leka only because of the chunky roots. Fill her in, give her a shake. Ad infinitum. Look at this lecker piece that looks like an olive. <laughs> you can go all the way down there. Oh boy, oh boy, we did it. Well, here's the thing, the work is done. Now we wait to see if the results are as expected. Never is there a guarantee in the orchid hobby, but I would say 90% everything should be okay. I'm hoping that at least we get to see the ciliaris blooms and if they don't last as long because of this disturbance, then so be it, but maybe just to see them again, that would be nice. I am monitoring this root right here as it is airborne, so to speak. I'm not going to cover it up just yet. I'm contemplating microfiber, but we'll have to wait and see whether the wind picks up again and becomes nasty or whether we get a little bit of humidity. Anyway, for now, it's okay. I'm also monitoring this root right here. It is also airborne, but I have some great roots in the pot. Off camera, I did a double, double, triple, quadruple check about the whole smelly part that was in that corner. And I did pick out more moss. Can't pick out the algae, but I really gave it another good rinse. Still being mindful of this root right here. And I also supported the orchid, even though she felt like she was okay. Mm -mm -mm. It's a bifoliate. Better safe than sorry. They are going back on their shelf and I have a lot of cleanup to do. However, let me just say, if you stayed to the end of the video, thank you so very, very much. I did want to do a quick repot and it ended up probably being much longer of a video than I thought. But I hope that some of the information that came through as I was repotting both these orchids is of help and useful. And in the event you find yourself in a similar situation, that you can proceed with confidence and be sure that you're doing it the right way without having to worry too much. That is the aim of the game of these videos giving you the same reassurance that I have. And when I say 90%, that's pretty high. I'm pretty confident. Touch wood. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. Have yourselves a fabulous day. On one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.